Okay, we're going to look at describing data via graphs and what we need to look at and how we can present our data and also learn how to calculate the mean and the median. So some of the big ideas you need to make sure you're aware of is categorical versus quantitative data, um, what X bar mean, uh, represents, what a median is and how to calculate it. And what does CUS and BS mean? We get to swear in the AP Stats class? That's what it means? Well, not exactly. So hold that thought for a second, and we will explain what that means here. Okay, there are two types of data that um, you need to represent a lot of times with graphs. The first is categorical data, and we usually use bar graphs or pie charts. The next is quantitative data, which we use dot plots, stem plots, sometimes called stem and leaf plots, histograms, and box plots, also known as box and whisker plots. Just as a reminder, categorical data is usually count data. When we're counting on um, the number of people who say yes, or counting the number of people who say no, or we're um, looking at area codes or zip codes. It's data that represents a category, therefore it's count data. Usually making taking an average doesn't make any sense. Having 0.5 of it makes no sense whatsoever. Where quantitative data is a measurement of some kind to make Taking an average and getting something 0.5 makes sense. Heights is quantitative data. Um, ages is quantitative data. Any kind of data that is measuring something. And then there's that uh, cuss and BS notation again. And again, it's not to swear in class. Hold that thought, but I will give it to you here in just a second. Okay, when we represent quantitative variable, which is the most common thing in AP stats. We don't deal much with categorical. We almost always do with quantitative data. Um, there are things that we look at when we make a graph that we want to make sure that the viewer sees. The first thing is look for any overall patterns and look for any data that kind of steps away from that pattern, is different than the rest of the pattern. We want to point that data out. So the thing is to make sure we be specific in our descriptions. We describe put in specific Want to make sure we use specific numbers whenever possible. Tell me the center as at a, at a specific number. Describe the spread from this very small value to this very big value. We want to use specific numbers. But the things that we want to describe when we try to, to illustrate our data with a graph is where the center is, what any unusual features are that may occur, what the shape of it is, and how far the data is spread. What is the smallest value to its biggest value? So if you look here, you will notice here that those four words represent cuss and the B specific is the BS. So this is what I'm always going to ask you to do is cuss and BS anytime you see a graph and it will require you to write a paragraph that includes all of these features. Center, unusual features, shape and spread, and make sure you're specific in your answers. Give me some specific numbers to back up your descriptions. Okay, one way of, of describing the center, one number that we use quite often is the mean, which most of you know is the word is the average. Uh, we've been using this already in class, and I've used the symbol here, x bar, to represent the mean. And basically it means to add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. Um, you need to be aware of this notation here, down here. This is how the formula looks like on the AP exam. That fancy E, which is sigma, the Greek letter sigma, means add them up. Okay, it's a shorthand notation for write add up all the values and divide by the number of numbers. So you just need to be aware that that fancy E means add them up, because that will show up again later on in some of the other formulas that we'll look at. So again, that's how you calculate the mean, or sometimes called the average. The next measure of center that we use quite often is something called the median which describes the exact midpoint of a distribution. Um, the, mid, the median, which is abbreviated with the capital letter M, is, again, this is the process. You arrange all the numbers from smallest to biggest. If you have an odd number of numbers in your data set, then it's the very middle number. So, for example, if I have five numbers in my data set and I order them from smallest to biggest, the third number becomes my median. However, if you have an even number of numbers in your data set, so let's say I have six numbers, there's no true middle number. So what you do then is you go to the third and fourth one, which is the closest to the center, and you find the average of those two. So many times the median will be end up being a number 0.5 um, when you add, represent that as the average of the middle two numbers. So here's an example. Here's some data collected from 20 randomly selected New York workers, and they were asked how long it takes them to get to work in minutes. 
So if you look here, I have everything from uh, five minutes up to 85 minutes was my longest commute time, okay? So the um, first thing I'm going to do is calculate the average. Notice the notation x bar, which is to add up all those values and divide by 20. And it turns out that my average is 31.25 minutes. Okay, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Um, when you go to calculate the median, it takes a little more work because first of all, remember you have to put the data in order from smallest to biggest, and then you got to look at the number of numbers that are there. In this case, there are 20 of them, so that means that there's an even number. So you got to find the exact halfway point, and it will occur between the tenth and the eleventh number, because that's where the middle of 20 numbers would be. So I got to find the average of the tenth and eleven numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the data and make a stem, or what's called a stem and leaf plot. So if you notice, all my numbers are between, like I mentioned, 0, 5, and 85. So I'm going to make my stems be all the 10s from 0 all the way down to 8. And then I'm going to make the leaves all the different occurrences. So for example here, if you notice, 15 actually occurs four different times. So I'm going to put four fives above, um, uh, next to the stem 1 to represent each of the occurrences of 15. And as another example, 20 occurs three times. So I'm going to, uh, next to the stem 2, put three zeros there. Kind of arrange them in order so it makes it easy to see the data. And you can see it arranged from the smallest to the biggest. So then remember, i got to find the difference between the 10th and the 11th value. So if I look here and I start counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's somewhere between those two values. The 20th value is 20, and the 20, I'm sorry, the 10th value is 20, and the 11th value is 25. So that remember, I've got to calculate the average of those two. So 20 plus 25 divided by 2 means that my median is 22.5 minutes. Notice here that these two values did not end up being very close to one another. Um, that's significant, well, something we'll look at a little bit later on, but for right now, I just need to realize that they're not always going to come out to be the same. Sometimes they do, but this particular data set did not. Okay, last thing on a stem and leaf plot, very important, you must include a key every time you do that. You've got to tell me what each one of those numbers represent. And you pick one of the examples. They happen to pick 4 and 5. So the 4 slash 5 tells me, oh, that represents 45 minutes. So that people who look at this know how to interpret the numbers here. So always, 100% of the time, provide a key anytime you do a stem or stem and leaf plot.